This video is a part of the Director Project, a monthly video essay series analyzing various directors and their films. You will find a playlist with more videos from various creators in the description below. Shout out to my friend Dan over at Eyebrow Cinema for the invitation. The decision to talk about The Dark Knight during Christopher Nolan month was a surprisingly difficult one. On one hand, the film is open to a lot of discussion, but discussion that has been mined for over a decade now. The director has now done bigger, bolder subjects including genre-defining epics on time and space. The Dark Knight remains one of his best, and probably one of the names readily attached to the man himself. So why would I go with the Big Mac of Nolan's filmography? Nolan has really built himself up as a compelling filmmaker, taking on extraordinary topics that require tons of thought, planning, and imagination. Interstellar spanned the universe, Inception expanded our viewpoint of dreams, and Tenet deconstructed our vision of time. The Dark Knight, well, it's a deconstruction of people. More so people's faith and hope in each other that makes it so much more compelling than some of his more recent films. In fact, hope and faith are powerful components in The Dark Knight. So much so that majority of the motives require faith in the opposite character's reaction. This then wonderfully ties into the larger story, while also saluting the adaptive material. First, it's Christian Bale's Bruce Wayne or Batman a man who became a vigilante to stop those who would commit crimes and avoid creating more people like himself, hopeless. The Dark Knight's story is Bruce Wayne's ability to find some sort of remedy to his psychological torment and that hope, that faith, comes in the character of Harvey Dent. The knight in shining armor presents the ability to provide order to the streets of Gotham while not going through the reckless abandon that a masked vigilante would. Bruce is committed to making Harvey a success, as seen with the party he throws. I believe in Harvey Dent. I believe that on his watch, Gotham can feel a little safer. In the hopes of becoming free from the commitment to Batman. You know that day that you once told me about when Gotham would no longer need Batman? It's coming. Losing this commitment would tie back to the ending of Batman Begins and his ability to be with the love of his life, Rachel Dawes. The fascinating part of Bruce's journey throughout the Dark Knight films is his want to restore order, despite his character highlighting quite the opposite. The character of Batman takes justice into his own hands, but at the same time, Bruce is smart enough to know that the symbol of Batman cannot work as a justice figure. The character lives beyond the means of order, and while rarely explored in the comics, is an idea presented beautifully in Nolan's films. What is Bruce's exit plan? No human being even at peak condition, could sustain a life like this, no matter what amount of money, and adds another layer to his want for Harvey to succeed. The Joker is the other side of the coin to Bruce Wayne. The Joker is an anarchist, with a belief that everybody around him is a single day from being him, deranged, dangerous, and sadistic. His hope is to push everyone to that edge, even Bruce Wayne himself. This thought presents itself several times, most prominently in the boat scene where the Joker is hoping two separate ferries, one full of Gotham citizens, the other with its criminals, will create a position for devastation. What were you trying to prove? That deep down, everyone's as ugly as you. You're alone. The Joker is reliant on people's inner madness to create chaos. This premise, while being the focal point of the character, is best addressed in Alan Moore's The Killing Joke. In The Killing Joke, a failed comedian and family man suffers one bad day that finally drives him insane. This was depicted a few times in the story the Joker would share to several characters in The Dark Knight, sometimes even mentioning one day. One day they carve her face, and one night he goes off crazier than usual. Alan Moore said in his creation of The Killing Joke that he was trying to show the similarities and contrast to Batman and the Joker, with one day being what created two sides of the same coin. Regardless, Batman, despite society robbing him of his parents and childhood, has faith in society to do the right thing, as we are all capable of stepping away and being empathetic. You know, they'll be doubling up the rate this city's inhabitants are losing their minds. This city just showed you that it's full of people ready to believe in good. 
This is apparent quite a few times, not only on the fairy scene, but his connection with Lucius Fox in this scene. It can only be accessed by one person. This is too much power for one person. That's why I gave it to you. And even with Gordon, when Gordon gives Batman extra time to remove the thugs in the tower. We have clear shots. Dent is in there with them. We have to save Dent. I have to save Dent. Get ready. Two minutes. Then we reach. Fox uses the sonar telephone system, and at the end, his faith in doing the right thing leads to the machine being disabled. Sometimes people deserve to have their faith. Hell, even Harvey Dent, or Two-Face at this point, leaves the people's lives up to a coin, or his faith in the coin to make a decision. At the end, despite Batman losing the battle to the Joker, with Dent being defeated with the One Bad Day clause as mentioned before, he realizes society needs order and needs to keep faith in the larger ideal. Because sometimes, truth isn't good enough. Sometimes people deserve more. Sometimes people deserve to have their faith rewarded. As presented heavily throughout Nolan's films, Batman as a figure needs to be symbolic, more than the man behind the mask. You've given them everything. Not everything. Not yet. It needs to present an idea to changing society for the better, but relying on our wants and needs at heart to be provided with structure and safety. There's only one police in this town. The opposite of the Joker's belief. In a lot of ways, the Joker was right in the famed interrogation scene. Society, unchained, without a plan, will go mad, and would ultimately unfold if Dent's time as a DA was thrown out. Despite Batman taking the fall, the Joker's actions and moral deconstruction of the city of Gotham would become the main focus for The Dark Knight Rises. The Batman didn't murder Harvey Dent, he saved my boy then took the blame for Harvey's appalling crimes so that I could, to my shame, build a lie around this fallen idol. This, of course, leads to the epic trilogy ender, The Dark Knight Rises. I've talked about The Dark Knight Rises before on the channel, and while it is a good movie with plenty of flaws, it continued this trend of characters' hopes and face except it shows the demoralizing effects of hope and faith gone wrong. But it might also mean saving your life. And that is more important. I'm so sorry. I failed you. You trusted me. And I failed you. At the end of the dark night, Batman had failed. Dent had died and become a psychopath. Rachel Dawes, the love of his life, became fertilizer. Bruce was robbed of his escape and his future, thus leading to one of my favorite quotes in the entire trilogy. There's nothing out there for me. And that's the problem. Which is a painful delivery from Christian Bale. This line shows the power of hope, and throughout the movie, we are warned of misplacing that hope. You're afraid that if I go back out there, I'll fail. I'm afraid that you want to. You were gone seven years. Seven years I waited, hoping that you wouldn't come back. Christian Bale struggled throughout the trilogy to present consistent action set pieces. A lot of people really pick apart his delivery of action, but in the end, he presented what mattered the most, a great adaptation of the character of Bruce Wayne or Batman. The study of the character of Bruce Wayne is far more important to me than how great an action scene is filmed, regardless of how great it is. It's about the character, a psychologically tormented soul, hell-bent on saving people from the fate he has endured. The Dark Knight isn't just a compelling superhero film, and not just a compelling crime story, but a thoughtful, psychological examination of a decade-old character. It's why the film will go on to be one of the best in the genre, and remain a nearly timeless masterpiece.